Good afternoon. Welcome to Half Time Report on CNBC TV 18. I'm Sonia Shanoi. With me is Ekta Batra and Mangala Malu. Well, for the market, it is really all over the place. There's no definitive trend. The minor pullbacks are getting sold into. The rallies are not sustain not sustainable, and there is definitely still a lot of trepidation in the market after steep sell off we saw in the last many days. There is no recovery in sight just yet. Of course, the global market is also an evolving story. So in that context, there's definitely a lot of caution on board. Uh, the only thing you can say is that the bank Nifty. continues to be on the downside and exerting pressure on the overall market so all your key bank you know constituents whether it's an indusind bank icici bank all under pressure and for now um, the recovery is still a bit elusive hi guys hi sonia hi mangalam yes absolutely as of now we have the nifty in a 200 point range you would have to say today so yes it is volatile week but in a tight range but you got to look look at what's happened on a week to day basis the nifty's already lost around 2 and a half odd percent the bank nifty's lost over 3 and a half odd percent at current reckoning so you have to see the losses on a larger context as well we have a lot of stocks in focus a lot of sectors in focus metal stocks have been declining a lot of stocks uh, specific actions such as titan and a couple of the omcs which are rising such as bpcl which is one of your top gainers today so there's a lot to talk about underneath the surface and we have to track what's happening on a larger scale for our markets brent crude correcting is definitely positive yes it is positive but let's see where uh, you know that takes us from here but the important part however is that you know we're very close to the lows that we hit in september 2022 september 2022 the nifty bounced back from lows of 16750 Remember thereafter was uh, the start of the decoupling move in our markets itself we saw near 13% move over the next two months after those levels so maybe a bit of uh, a support is what we're seeking out there we have with us uh, a chief economist yes so uh, in fact we have abig barua who's the chief economist at hdfc bank who's joining in on the show he's written a note with his team with regards to the svb collapse and what that might mean on a larger scale for the fed as well as for the indian markets uh especially uh you know asset classes such as the rupee abik hi welcome to the show well you know now the conversation seems to have shifted to credit suisse and what's happening there the european banking space on a larger scale just wanted to ask your thoughts about how insulated you think the indian banking space and macros would be okay uh, abik i think you're on mute if you could just unmute yourself sorry i i'm i'm, yeah. I'm terribly sorry uh, i think the indian system is um, considerably insulated um, because um, uh, the exposure to uh, these banks um, uh, the, the 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 three banks in the us that, that have uh, failed and even to the european banking system is limited our regulations are very tight and you must recognize the fact that in the us um a regulation is very messy with many entities involved in regulating especially some of these smaller banks uh there is this a notion of a soft touch regulation which often leads to governance problems remember as we did not have a risk officer for about a year i think the indian situation is very different so i would think that the indian um bank system is relatively insulated but if this were to sort of blow up into a full scale financial meltdown across the board and sort of take a toll on the underlying economies clearly we are not entirely insulated but i think the degree of sensitivity is lower considerably lower even among emerging markets for india okay abik hi good afternoon thanks for joining in you know the fed yeah. leadership was all about containing inflation right with rate hikes in the last one year but suddenly in the last two weeks things have changed and turned on a dime and now there's this banking turmoil to react to uh, what is your expectation from the fed meet do you think that there's one rate hike coming and then that's it how do you think the fed is going to sort of grapple with uh, all that's transpired in the last fortnight um uh, I, i don't think they will I, i think inflation is a much bigger concern than financial stability at this stage and if you just see the uh, balance sheet size of sbb or signature or even some of the banks where uh, th- there is some anxiety that they will face stress the balance sheet size is small which um uh, tells you um a number of things including uh, the initial impact the nature of the counterparty risk in the second round and so forth So I think this is not a layman moment. Uh, the bigger banks, take J.P. Morgan or Citi, they are much more tightly regulated. 
Um, so while there could be slow burn, I'm not ruling out the possibility of other small banks uh, you know, going under or facing severe stress. But I don't think this will overshadow the, the Fed's sort of primary agenda, which is to bring inflation under control. So maybe you know people were penciling in a 50 basis point hike uh, earlier before the SVB thing happened, but uh, maybe it would be 25 basis points. But uh, to quote a, a famous American economist, it would be uh, you know dangerous for the Fed to kind of wimp out on their inflation fight at this stage. Right. Um, what do you uh, you know believe that uh, the other central banks in the world could do? I mean. Across the Atlantic, we have problems in uh, Europe as well with Credit Suisse, etc. Uh, yes. Well, well, let me just sort of point out the fact that the Credit Suisse problem has been festering for a very long time, and this hmm. is perhaps uh, the tipping point. So I think we shouldn't sort of uh, read too much into, um, into this specific set of events causing the problems at Credit Suisse. We, we were, we've been aware of this for a very long time. And as far as you know, central bank responses are concerned, uh, let us not speculate. Let's wait till this evening and see what the ECB does. Uh, Pre-SDB or pre-Credit Suisse, uh, the, uh, the expectation was that the ECB would go ahead and hike the rate by 50 basis points. Let's see what they do today. If they kind of bring it down to 25, clearly they are recognizing the possibility of uh, a financial stability risk. Um, their, um, uh, the, what M Madame uh, Lagarde uh, communicates to the market is also very important. Uh, but again, I'd like to sort of emphasize the fact that our view, and I think there are divergent views of the market, uh, and one needs to pick a side. Uh, what we are saying, we pick the side which says that look, uh, this is all there, but we are not looking at a financial stability uh, risk uh, of the kind that we saw in 2007, 2008. And there is an elephant in the room, which is uh, high inflation uh, and much, much higher than what the tolerance level is. And that would continue to get priority in uh, in a central bank uh, decision making, although there could be some interim softening, but we are still, mm. uh, you know, midway through the inflation battle. Okay. Abhik, what would all this mean for the Reserve Bank of India when they meet in April? Uh, on one hand, uh, you know, the CPI data is still above their tolerance band, but we have a lot of uncertainties on the other end. And we also have Brent crude, which has softened quite considerably. I think there is one more rate hike that is due because if you look at uh, core inflation, which I think uh, where, where I think the um, attention of the RBI and indeed other central banks have mm. shifted, that remains you know resolutely high. And unless there is a softness on that front, uh, the RBI will uh, continue to sort of withdraw accommodation. It is possible that this is the last of the repo rate uh, hikes, but then it could turn its attention towards liquidity, move to a ne negative liquidity regime, but uh, monetary tightening uh, will continue for a while because you might have uh, some gains uh, coming through on the crude price front. Maybe some of the commodities will uh, have shown some degree of softening because of the current crisis and the risk off and so forth. But uh, the the core uh, remains, um, mm. you know, alarmingly elevated. And until um, that is tamed and brought under control, I think uh, withdrawal of accommodation will continue. And I'm sort of still betting on a 25 basis point so, hike in the next policy. Okay. And let me just make one final point: is that if the central banks were to kind of mm. change their game at this stage, and which I refer to as wimping out. Uh, then I, it might also feed the fear because you know there is a sense in the market always that the central bank knows more, knows better, and uh, if they sort of significantly altered their policy, uh, it would sort of send perhaps a signal to the market that things are far worse uh, than what they believe at this stage. Okay, all right, uh, Abhi. Thanks a lot for uh, you know setting. 
um, the tone for us as to what to expect from the RBI as well as what to expect from the FOMC uh, given all the challenges. Thanks a lot for that. It's very quiet for the market actually. It is uh, volatile but within that tight range, so just below the 16,000, uh, sorry, sorry, the 17,000 mark. Mm. Uh, let's slip into a quick break. On the other side of the break, Amit Mahajan, the Director of Business Development at Paras Defence and Space Technologies will join in. There's a new joint venture